right, we are going to continue chapter 12 of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Once the holidays had started, Ron and Harry were having too good a time to think much about Flamel. They had the dormitory to themselves, and the common room was far emptier than usual, so they were able to get good armchairs by the fire. They sat by the hour, eating anything they could spear on a toasting fork, bread, crumpets, marshmallows, and plotting ways of getting Malfoy expelled, which were fun to talk about even if they wouldn't work. Ron also started teaching Harry wizard chess. This was exactly like muggle chess, except the figures were alive, which made it a lot more like directing troops in a battle. Ron's set was very old and battered. Like everything else he owned, it had once belonged to somebody else in his family. In this case, his grandfather. However, old chessmen weren't a drawback at all. Ron knew them so well, he never had trouble getting them to go where he wanted. Here's a couple pieces here. Harry played with the chessmen, uh, played chessmen with Seamus Finnegan at lent him, and they didn't trust him at all. He wasn't a very good player yet, and they kept shouting different bits of advice at him, which was confusing. Don't send me there. Can't you see his knights? Send him. We can afford to lose him. On Christmas Eve, Harry went to bed looking forward to the next day for the food and the fun, but not expecting any presents at all. When he had woke early the next morning, however, the first thing he found was a small pile of packages at the foot of his bed. Happy Christmas, said Ron sleepily as Harry scrambled out of bed and pulled on his dressing gown. You too, said Harry. Will you look at this? I've got some presents. What did you expect, turnips, said Ron, turning at his own pile, which was a lot bigger than Harry's. Harry picked up the top parcel. It was wrapped in a thick brown paper and scrawled across it to Harry from Hagrid. Inside was a roughly cut wooden flute. Hagrid had obviously whittled it himself. Harry blew it. It sounded a bit like an owl. A second very smart parcel contained a note. We received your message and enclosed your Christmas present from Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia. Uh, taped to the note was a 50 pence piece. Well, that's friendly, said Harry. Ron was fascinated by the 50 pence. Weird, he said. What a shape. Is this money? You can keep it, said Harry, laughing at how pleased Ron was. Hagrid and my aunt and uncle, so who sent these? I think I know who that one's from, said Ron, going pink and pointing to the red lumpy parcel. My mum. I told her you didn't expect any presents and oh no, he groaned. She made you a weasley jumper. Harry tore open the parcel to find a thick, handed sweater in emerald green and a large box of homemade fudge. Every year she makes us a jumper, said Ron unwrapping his own, and mine's always maroon. Well, that's really nice of her, said Harry, trying the fudge, which was very tasty. His next present also contained sweets, a large box of chocolate frogs from Hermione. This, was the only, this left only one parcel. Harry picked it up and felt it. It was very light. He unwrapped it. Something very fluid and silvery gray uh, went slithering to the floor, where it laid in gleaming folds. Ron gasped. I've heard of those, he said in a hushed voice, dropping every box of every flavor beans he got from Hermione. If that's what I think it is, they're very rare and very valuable. What is it? Harry picked the shining silvery cloth off the floor. It was strange to the touch, like water woven into material. It's an invisibility cloak, said Ron. I'm sure it is. Try it on. Harry threw the cloak around his shoulder and Ron gave a yell. It is. Look down. Harry looked down at his feet, but they had gone. He dashed to the mirror. Sure enough, his reflection looked back at him, just as his, uh, just his head suspended in midair. His body was completely invisible. He pulled the cloak over his head, and his reflection vanished completely. There's a note, said Ron suddenly. A note fell out of it. Harry pulled off the cloak and seized the letter. Written in narrow, loopy writing he had never seen before were the following words. Your father left this in my possession before he died. It is time it was returned to you. Use it very well. A very Merry Christmas to you. There was no signature. Harry stared at the note. Ron was admiring the cloak. I'd give anything for one of these, he said. Anything. What's the matter? Nothing, said Harry. He felt very strange. Who had sent the cloak? Had it really once belonged to his father? Before he could say or think anything else, the dormitory door was flung open and Fred and George rounded in. 
Harry stuffed the cloak quickly out of sight. He didn't feel like sharing it with anyone else yet. Merry Christmas! Hey look, Harry's got a Weasley jumper too. Fred and George were wearing blue jumpers, one with a very large yellow F on it, the other with a large yellow G. Harry's is better than ours though, said Fred, holding up Harry's jumper. She obviously makes more of an effort if you're not family. Why aren't you wearing yours, Ron? George demanded. Come on, get it on. They're lovely and warm. I hate maroon, Ron moaned half-heartedly as he pulled it over his head. You haven't gotten a letter on yours, George observed. I suppose she thinks you don't forget your name. But we're not stupid. We know that we're Gred and Forge. What's all this noise? Percy Weasley stuck his head through the door, looking disapprovingly. He had come halfway through, unwrapping his presents too, and carried a lumpy jumper over his head, which Fred seized. P for prefect. Get it on, Percy. Come on. We're all wearing ours. Even Harry has one. I don't want, Percy said thickly, as the twins forced the jumper over his head and knocking his glasses askew. If you're not sitting with the prefects today either, said George, Christmas is for family. They frog marched Percy from the room, his arms pinned by, by his sides to his jumper. Here are a couple more chests. We will stop there and then continue.